Hello. I have been talking with somebody who is going to die soon because she has cancer and she's decided not to treat herself and so she will be looking at three months most. And she told me that it's such a relief to her. Such an incredible relief to know that she's going to let it go, this life, and she's going to go into the adventure of dying. And of course, in our society, in our contemporary world, we tend to think of death as the end of everything, because we think that everything is just what we can see and what we can touch. And there's nothing more that matters. And so, as long as we're alive, everything is hunky-dory and maybe difficult, but, you know, that's where the value lies. And that as soon as you know that you're going to die, that's the end of it. But it doesn't seem like that to her, my client. And if you look behind me, you'll see this symbol from Mexico about a celebration of death. There are many cultures where indeed people celebrate death and they have a day of the dead every year to remind them of the importance of death in our lives because, as many philosophers have noted, death is the only certainty about life. Life is always going to end in exactly the same way, which is that it comes to an end. It terminates. None of us are immortal. None of us live forever. All of us have a limited span of life on this earth. And many of us try to forget about that. When you're young, it does feel as if you're immortal and it may even seem a little bit boring that, you know, life seems always the same. But fairly soon you start to realize that every stage of life is different and that as time goes by, things change and alter and you never are the same. Tomorrow you'll be a slightly different person to what you were today. Things are in movement and the way you process everything that happens to you changes who you are. So when you become aware of that and you become aware of the limited span of your life and your limited ability to make the most of that, you know, the limited scope of all that, you realize it's actually quite important. And so to be aware of that frame of your life, the end of it, that limited time that you have, then it becomes much more important. And this is why you can see sometimes in people who are actually being told you have only three months to live or six months to live, this comes as a kind of relief. It's not difficult for us to understand that when we haven't been given that term. Because we all know that sometimes life seems overwhelmingly complex and difficult and varied and it seems as if we can't oversee it and no matter what we do there's always more to do. No matter how hard we work it's never enough. No matter how good we try to be to other people they're still dissatisfied with us. We're constantly aware of our limitations of our failings, of our guilt, of our regrets. It's not easy to live a life. And so when somebody gives you a kind of death sentence and tells you it's only another three months or only another year, there is this kind of lifting of the spirits when you think, okay, now I've got to make the most of that period of time. Now I know where I stand. Now I can finally give over and live. And so what people describe when they're in that position, well, not all of them, I mean, some people feel extremely anxious around it and take quite a bit of time to make sense of it, but some people 
do get this sense of elation and of euphoria where they feel everything is now suddenly possible. And why is that? Well, it is because their fears are lifted. The worst thing has already happened. You already know you're going to die. You already know it's time limited. Now it doesn't matter anymore. Now all that matters is to feel the life through you, is to connect to the world, is to really be aware of your aliveness, of this amazing miracle that you are this little unit of consciousness, this little connecting box to the universe, this place where life happens, this place where time becomes something active, where something can be lived, something can be done, something is experienced, something is being made sense of. Because that is what you are. You are a unit of consciousness. And no matter what your beliefs are of the afterlife or the end of all things at death, it makes no difference to what you are now. You are a miraculous pocket of consciousness and you are wasting it much of the time and you know you are wasting it much of the time by prevarication by postponement by telling yourself life is too hard you can't really do what you feel you ought to be do doing you you know that you feel incapacitated a lot of the time you know you feel lazy a lot of the time you know you feel you're falling short a lot of the time you know you're not living up to your real potential to your real possibilities you are waiting but you know none of us can tell how much time we've got some of us will suddenly die, unexpectedly, fatally. And so it's always the same, really. Our time is always limited. There is always a death sentence over our heads. And it's time to wake up to that fact and to live. Live while you can. Live while you're here. Live while you Command this little box of life, this little entity that is connected up to all these others, other entities, that is connected in some ways to all that is, that is connected in some ways to the entire universe, to the cosmos. It is in you. It works through you. You are, like everybody else, resonant with all that is. And you are capable of much, much more than you think. And to underestimate that and to postpone doing something with that and doing something about making the most of your life should not be lost. Now is the time. Here is the moment. This is your life. This is what you've got. No matter what your beliefs are, it is always possible to become more into your life, more active in your life, more alive, more aware, more connected, more real. It's worth doing, because at that moment, life becomes good. Enjoy it, my friend. Make something of it while you can.